Good afternoon, Facebook fans. We are uh, here pilot testing a start of a new series that's going to take place every Tuesday from now on uh, during the very unique properties we're going to be touring on Broker Open House Tours. We're going to give you guys a first look into some of these interesting houses. One of our listings that went completely viral internationally, it's been all over the news, all over TV, is here at 168 Filers Lane and we're going to take you inside for those that did not get a chance to come and see it even though the property has been shown Sid what about a hundred something times so far yeah, yeah. so uh, to begin we're in Stony Point New York we're about 40 minutes north of Manhattan the really interesting thing I'm going to first point out about this property is that it actually has two separate lots on it where behind me is this old barn uh, it's in need of restoration. It's actually three stories. It goes all the way down to the street called Ewald Place. You can have access to it to this lot from that side. At one point, this house actually owned all the land all the way down to the Hudson River. Then after that, 30 acres in front of it. Now we're down to a little bit under an acre. The house is $399, including both lots. And there's been so much history in this house and there's such unique artifacts so we're going to give you a little sneak peek of what's inside. So this property was built in 1849 by James Garner who is actually the son of the Havistra Brick Company. The West Havistra Brick Company pretty much supplied the whole Northeast uh, with bricks from you know any type of construction. The plant was uh, down almost where that water tower is in the distance and so this this property was actually built to be the most grand summer residence it was not built for the for his family himself it was really built to attract the wealthiest people uh, from Manhattan and the area to kind of get a glimpse of upstate New York even though I don't really consider this upstate but <laughs> we're only 20 minutes from Nyack so it started being constructed in 1849. It actually was built with double brick construction. And most people that have been seeing this house swear to me that they've never seen a house as structurally sound and as solid as this in their entire lifetime, unless they would be looking at properties like maybe in Europe. Um, from about the 1850s to 1920, it was used in this tradition as a summer rental. Then in the early 20s, this gentleman named Rollo Peters, who was a big Broadway set designer and theater guy, he started to buy mansions left and right that were along the Hudson River to kind of continue this summer rental tradition. So he purchased the property next. Um, there was people of the likes of James Dean that stayed here at times and all sorts of other stars. And then in 1951, uh, I will walk closer and I'll continue the story, but in 1951, the relatives of my client purchased it, who were two very well-known artists. Uh, one was Sippy Pinellas, and she was the first female art director for Vogue magazine. She was the art director for Charm magazine. She worked for Madame Moselle. Then her and her girlfriends created Seventeen magazine. Her husband uh, was... Um, blanking on his name. What was his name? Oh, uh, Bill, oh Bill Golden. Sorry, Bill excuse me. I, I've told the story a hundred times. I should know it. But Bill, Bill Golden uh, married Sippy and Bill actually designed the CBSI logo, which is probably the most iconic logo in the world. You'll see a lot of CBS memorabilia throughout the house. And they basically bought this house because it reminded them of something in Paris. And they really bought it to, to entertain and continue that lifestyle. And people from Andy Warhol actually stuff in this house. I mean, I have some of her original invitations of the parties that they would throw here. Bill was known to like work the gardens. These gardens were magnificent at one point. They haven't been taken care of, obviously, in a while. Where you saw before is actually the back of the house. Um, this is really what the front entr entrance was. and. Sippy and Bill stripped the house of what they called frivolous aspects. There was a big veranda in the front of the house. There was a lot of intricate ironwork on the roof. It's no longer there. They really stripped things down to kind of keep that Parisian aesthetic and they just went in and painted everything white. Uh, 
took down some of the overly ornate stuff, like some of the mantles are not original, but most of them are. But when we go inside, you're gonna see how well intact a lot of these period details have stayed all the way from the 1800s, including the original mirrors. So we'll walk around and we'll, we'll take a look inside. Actually, the patio I'm standing on, um, my client's parents got married here at this house. The property does go beyond this fence and you, you have river views on all floors, but the trees behind me are on this property so they can easily be cut down to even expose the river views more. And what's really amazing is you can see behind this house is you have a 600 acre religious retreat center as your backdrop. So there's gonna be no development there whatsoever. It's a very peaceful, that's a private road. It's gated at night. It's called the Marian Shrine. Uh, a lot of people thought this house belonged to the Marian Shrine. It, it did not. This house was actually built before the shrine existed, which is why the access of this driveway is through the shrine. We, it is 168 Filers Lane, but Filers Lane is way down there. Back in the day, obviously, there was really, this was probably the only house within a quite a distance around us. So Filers Lane to this day is way back there, but we're technically on a Filers Lane address. And like I mentioned, this house, everything you're seeing brick-wise was all double, la double layered. I mean, even, even this patio is just amazing. And something as simple as this thing to clean your shoes off. This was the servant's door that goes into the kitchen. Like I said, we're at the back entrance of the house and I'm gonna point out some really interesting stuff inside. Sid, what was the first thing you thought of when you first entered this uh, home? Um, it's just the grandness, the scale, the, the height, and it's just a bygone era that makes you think of, of all the good times that's been had here. Totally, and look, if you see, that's this is a postcard of the actual house that's actually my client's grandmother there this is what i was talking about there's some ironwork that's no longer there this i love that we have this original this was a sketch from sippy to explain to her new york city friends how to come to the parties so it was a little directional sketch and i read a lot of stories in this awesome book that talked about the debates and the fights they would have of who's on the guest list they'll have another party but she needed to completely change the guest list i mean i you can only imagine by looking at that step how many people have been in this house since 1849 and like i said i only mentioned a few names like james dean andy warhol actually there was a warhol shoe hanging here when i first came to this house but you know i told the owners we needed we need to hide some of the items that are quite valuable and do a quick pan of these old shots these are actually the first vogue magazine holiday photo shoots that were done in this very house. I'm going to show you exactly where those doors were. Because um, my favorite thing when I first walked in this house by far was the ceilings and these doors. And everything's cluttered, but there's a lot of incredible stuff that remains in this house. Um, these mirrors in every single room, not even a crack in them. They're all original mirrors from 1850s. This room probably does, does not have the original fireplace mantles, but it's two fireplaces. This actually is a living room, but was designed, this table I know has been in this house for well over a hundred years. This is an oak table. All the leaves are stored in the attic. This table can fill this entire dining room for a dinner party of like 45 people. And it's just, it's just incredible. These are actually those the exact, Pretty much the exact doorways that the home shots were originally done. There's a big holiday uh, shoot that was done here. And the funniest thing is even though like the old door, the, the doors that were here did get destroyed in Sandy, but when Sippy moved here, like I said, she wanted to change things. She, for whatever reason, did not like the like St. Pat Patrick's Cathedral style front doors. Uh, coincidentally, they're in the barn on the second floor, sitting there in perfect condition, waiting to be put back. So we have the original doors that are just a more ornate version of what you see here, ready to go. 
And even, I mean, even look at this, like this, the storm door that once fell off, you can kind of see it in that distance. It's in perfect condition. Look at all the intricate woodwork that can easily go back uh, on the back of the house. This is a very, very cool room. The house actually has a total of eight fireplaces in it, including one in the bathroom. This, you know, could be used as another dining room or a smaller dining room. Uh, the, the ceiling is incredible. Funny thing is a lot of the chandeliers at one point or another were stolen from the house. There was a mirror this size, I think it's the one in the third floor bedroom, that I heard a really funny story uh, from the current owners that they were having a big one of their big parties here. A, big, a mirror was missing. Somebody attending the party was like, I know who has your mirror. And they, uh, you know, back in those days, they probably all trampled down to go find the person and they did get a hold of the mirror and it's going it's back in that third floor bedroom, which I'll, I'll point out. These are some of, uh, some of Sippy's drawings. Uh, she's actually, she has a book, another book coming out on her. It was actually an old recipe book. She hand drew all these beautiful pictures and it's a collection of her recipes. And some of the people that have been reaching out to us have not only been international buyers, like from, Ryan Mendoza, who, who bought the um, old Rosa Parks house before it got just destroyed, and he basically bought it to save it. He shipped it to Berlin. He refurbished it, and he's, and he's sending it back to the United States to uh, be reconstructed. But they, these are the kind of people that have reached out to us just in this shortness of maybe a week. How long has this been on the market, Sid? Like, what is this, our second week? This is the second week, and, and it's been connecting the family, too, to, to other members of the family. So this is not, I mean, it's very messy in here, but I'll just point out, like, there, there is a fireplace in the basement below. This was a kitchen that was put in the 50s, but back in the day, there is in the basement what the original kitchen would be with a massive fireplace. It has its own entrance. Um, can easily be spruced up and made it to, I mean, having a phenomenal walk-in pantry. And it's just awesome. I mean, some of the details, some of the utensils downstairs that I've seen that are just hanging around or some of them are from the 1800s and uh, you know I can't imagine some of the meals that were were prepared here and I even just love like these, this the detail of this like this metal work on these doors is awesome and actually speaking of doors come through this way I have to show you guys something really cool I don't know if you'll see it probably easier from here but notice how, take a good shot of this. Look at every door hinge in this house. How ornate, how much work went into this. I mean, those, those are carved, those are ornately carved hinges on every single door. It's just crazy. And we didn't even get to my favorite part, which is this staircase. Let's take a, put a shot, Frank, just up through that. I mean, it's an incredible, incredible three-story staircase with such detail. And we're going to go up that. But before we do, I can't help but point out these uh, original lithographs of Toulouse-Lautrec, who actually, my client's grandfather, was a collector. And the story I heard is he was in France, maybe at the Moulin Rouge, and there was a trade made for a bunch of Levi jeans and a couple cartons of cigarettes. And he got three original uh, Toulouse-Lautrec sketches for that that trade and of course they're just casually hanging here so like I said my, my favorite part of this house is definitely the staircase look at the, the detail a couple spindles are missing but they're here in, within the house um, I, I sold the house from the 1700s in West Nyack and I remember Anthony my inspector was telling me that people these spindles alone could be worth maybe 500 bucks a piece and God knows how many are on this staircase. So the second level, which has great river views, is got a total of two full baths, three bedrooms. You see all the floors are in actually good shape underneath all this carpet. So it's all beautiful hardwood floors. We've got a quick clip. Notice that some of the CBSI stuff, there's actually some really cool old uh, CBS paintings in the basement, but Look at that fireplace. I mean, that's an that's an original mantel. It's incredible. This this room connects to the other room. The ceilings are all gorgeous. 
I believe for quite some time, all the ceilings have been orange, but everything else in the house was usually all, all white. A little cool thing I think is, this I know did have a claw foot top in it before. I don't know when things change, but it's awesome to always have a fireplace in your bathroom. And uh, can't help but point out, pull chain toilet. These 50s fixtures are all working, very, very valuable. I mean, somebody would want to definitely clean this up and, you know, recycle it. And this is probably, you know, this room is, I would say, just, you know, just ready to go. Floors are gorgeous. You can't ask for a better view. Got the whole Hudson over there. And like I said, these trees can go down very easily. They're on the property, so you can top them off. And the first thing I notice when I come into this room is this seating area and these moldings here. And look at the detail of these moldings. Absolutely insane. Gorgeous. Of course, another fireplace. And on each floor, it's, we can step in here. They, each floor has its, this little, like, what I call this river view office nook. Such an awesome room. There's a balcony here. I've heard stories from old neighbors that have come out here that uh, uh, the last, um, my client's father was a musician. He practiced upstairs, and there was a studio once in the barn. And they actually sometimes would just go walk on this balcony and would guitar solo for the uh, rest of the world below you. <laughs> Sid, it actually, doesn't the house kind of, it has an Edward Scissorhands vibe to me it's in terms of location, how it's like you're perched above the rest of Stony Point. Absolutely, right? Absolutely, everything is built beneath you, yeah. Here's another, another great bedroom. Look at the floors again. Sorry, we don't have a lot of working, uh, like, you know, a lot of light fixtures in the house, so I apologize for the darkness, but another beautiful fireplace mantle. And like I said, this bedroom connects to the other one because back in the day, for heat purposes, they wanted a lot of airflow in between rooms, so that closet was just put up. It can come down. And then we're going to make our way up onto the third floor which is another four bedrooms and a full bath with some very, very interesting items. Uh, I guess I'll give you a quick glimpse of this room, but this was, uh, I guess we'll call this the war room, very uh, big military collector, uh, was a relative of the family, getting crazy, crazy stuff. We will be doing some estate sales here Throughout the month of October, I want to just point out one really interesting thing too. Remember those uh, those sippy recipes I was mentioning? That's a one. That's an example. And actually, somebody bought this entire collection and is publishing a book on it. And if you want to get in touch with us for other interesting information. Rumor has it, well, it's not, it's not a rumor, it's confirmed. There are several unpublished books from Sippy Pinellas in this house that we're willing to talk to publishers about doing something with, just like how somebody did with that recipe book that's coming out uh, next month. This needs a lot of work, but I mean, it's just a big, it's a big bathroom. It's got a lot of potential. We don't need to go really in there. I love... I love this old map of Paris. Like I said, Sippy was drawn to this house because it reminded her of, uh, of, of the property you would only see in Paris. And when Sid and I had been here every weekend, well, actually, this is our only our second weekend doing showings. It feels like it's been months, but <laughs> it really hasn't. But everybody comments that they feel like they're in Europe or another part of the world when they come here. They'll, they'll call me and say, like, is the Venetia house still available? Is my house from Paris? Like, it looks like it should be in Paris still on the market. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a plaster. Oh, plaster. Totally. If, uh, Frank, I wish if we had a home 
Well, if only we had a chance to take the phone and actually have you guys feel these walls. My friend Rob, who's an awesome uh, contractor, shout out to Rob. Hey, Rob. He told me that these walls, you could never even construct, even with an unlimited budget, you can never build walls like this. These feel like they're concrete. This thing is like a bomb shelter. Um, they're plaster walls, but I mean, you would break your hand trying to hit that. They used horsehair mixed in with the plaster. Yeah. Interesting. This is actually that mirror I mentioned in that story. That's the mirror. All original mirrors, still intact, not a crack in the glass. And actually, all the rooms have like, you know, two good sized closets usually. And again, looking out that window, it's an incredible, incredible river views. Well, I guess last but not least, it was a painting I wanted to show you guys down on the second level, but I kind of forgot about it. This was, at one point, a music studio. We have signed Marilyn Monroe stuff here. The the people that, it's funny, I opened up a folder and I saw these like signed uh, play, you know, playboy things of all people that have been playgirls that are all in this house probably and invited at parties at one point, you know, writing letters, dear Bill, thanks for having us. There's literally, it was like a folder right out there filled with them. Look at that old, that old wood stove. Incredible. And this is the last bedroom and it's so many books so many books and oddities throughout the house i love like i love seeing these letters that the with the old the old stamps on them you know from the 50s and 60s i mean it's it's really bizarre how it's just like everything was just you know it's still it's still here this is like a an entire time capsule in a bomb shelter and so that's a sneak peek. Well, more than a sneak peek, but that was, a, you know, uh, an, an express tour of 168 Filers Lane. Is there anything else that uh, I think you touched on a lot of stuff? I mean, I, when you look out this window, you see part of that Mary enshrinement that Adam, Adam mentioned, and it, as is, if it's yours, all yours, it has that feeling of a grand estate because nothing's going to be built on that as far as we know. And. Um, Sundays get a little busy here, as you can imagine, but other than that, you're you're in your own private oasis. And actually right below that, that's a sketch of, of Sippy, who was, you know, who was the last owner who basically took on the challenge of this house from 51 on, and uh, her items will largely remain in here. And we can't wait to see what happens with this house. There's been tons of action, tons of activity, uh, and you know we're actually at this point it's really about finding who's the latest lucky buyer is going to be because we have plenty to choose from and it's really a matter of who is actually going to restore this to its glory and use it to its full potential so we'll update you on who the next owner of this estate becomes and check back in with us on tuesday because like i said we're going to be doing this as a routine thing taking you into the most unique homes throughout the county just like this even though it's going to be hard to find one as unique as this. But Sid's got an idea or two. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.